Yo, what's up guys, back with another tutorial and I haven't done one of these in a while because you guys know I'm working on my course, Instagram Pro Editor. So the idea is I'm gonna do like three course videos, then do one of these videos over on YouTube because I love doing these tutorials. I think they're really helpful. And then over on my course, I'm gonna go way more in depth about my thought process, each tool in Lightroom. I'm gonna have guest editors and stuff like that over on my course over there. So if you're interested in that, join the awesome community we've got going over there sign up to instagram pro editor the number one photo editing course in the world guys especially when it comes to manipulating colors and working with contrast all about learning how to use lightroom to get the style you want and then i also go over everything i personally do in lightroom my workflow everything like that here in new zealand we actually go into lockdown tomorrow but if you guys are in the same situation you're stuck inside uh, consider signing up to Instagram Pro to guys. I am sure you're gonna love what you get inside there. But let's get into this tutorial, guys. Got another image sent in, and let's get into this one. All right, guys. So this image was sent in by Jet Set Jen. Just looking at her Instagram, showing you guys the image she sent me, and just her style. So she's obviously got a lot of clarity, a lot of pop, a lot of warmth. Those oranges really pop out. So we're gonna be bringing up the clarity, bringing up the shadows, really trying to get a warm, vibrant look. And we obviously making those oranges stand out. And then we also want the flatness. This is the image we're gonna be working with that she sent. And then this other one down here. So obviously quite a bit of flatness to the image like this one. And then low amount of contrast. Colors really pop, vibrance, clarity and then luminance to make certain colors pop out a lot. So give her a follow guys, her links will be down in the description. She's got really, really nice content and yeah, let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so I'm gonna start by bringing up the exposure just to get it quite similar to the other one and then just a bit of warmth in general. We want a really warm looking image and then same with the shadows, bring that up quite a bit because getting rid of the shadows is gonna create a real warm, vibrant feel and then we're gonna drop the highlights and whites because we're thinking low contrast, flat image, and then bringing up the blacks as well. We can see how we lose a lot of contrast there. I'm even gonna drop the contrast again. And then maybe bring back some highlights, whites, bring back a bit of blacks, shadows. Okay, we look a little too flat at the moment. Let's chuck in clarity, and that kind of brings in a bit of contrast there. Clarity will give that really crispy look you can see over here, the real pixelated, crispy style. So we're gonna bring that up a lot, and then we look kind of washed out. I'll just bring up the saturation and vibrance a bit. All right, we want a bit of extra vibrance because we've obviously gone for that bright, vibrant look. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the curves. And I'm just gonna touch up a few things up here again. So maybe highlights. All right, so the S curve here, we just want a fade to those blacks. Like I'm looking over here and I just don't think those blacks are very black. They got a bit of softness to them. So bring that up there. Drop the whites a bit because we want just a bit of flatness to the image. And then pretty much just normal through the middle there. Let's move on to some color. Okay, so split toning, I'm just gonna do just a bit of warmth in the shadows because we're trying to create a warm image. And then the highlights, maybe just some blues. You can see there's a lot of blues. You've got like blue greens, very blue water, and then very blue sky. And I think we could just put in a little bit of blue in the highlights. So now we're gonna go into color. And one thing going on here is I'm gonna start with the greens because they're very obvious to me that they're a very odd color or they're very blue so we're going to go for the greens and shift them towards a the blue and as you can see we can't get them that blue we have slided it the furthest you can across to the right so i'm going to come down to this tool here and slide the green calibration over to the right because that makes the greens more blue but then if i try it with the other ones they don't do that green blue it's only only really this one so I'm gonna shift that to the right and then it kind of makes all our other colors look a bit weird so let's get the oranges and slide them this direction and then blue primary let's get some reds back we look a bit orangey yellow get some reds back 
by doing like the orange and teal so now we get those we've got much more of those blue blues now and we should be able to do the rest up in the hsl while we're here we'll just do sharpening real quick so i'm going to lift that up quite a bit 130 and i won't touch the masking because we've got this real crispy really sharpened sort of look to the image so i might just leave that there Okay, so the rest of the edits should be within this HSL tab now. So let's start with hue and our oranges or our reds, I mean, look too orange. So let's try shifting the reds this way. Oranges, we just kind of want to think skin tones. At the moment, we look a little, little too like red. Same with the building back there. Let's move them this way. And there is an overlap, like your oranges affect your reds a little and your reds affect your oranges. So you just got to watch out for that. Yellows, I'm going to probably warm them up a lot. So yellows really affects like the rocks down here and stuff. They're quite a rich orange. So I'm going to slide them right across. And that's very typical of this really warm, bright, vibrant look. And then some blues. We look pretty green for starters. We want to go more blue. So let's try the aquas in this direction. And then blues. I'm going to keep them pretty much in the middle there. You can see this is definitely a very blue blue, this bit of the boat here, and aquas does not affect that. So the problem is like your blues affect your aquas and your aquas affect your blues, but on this boat here, it's only the blues. So I'm gonna focus in on that for shifting my blues. And I think they're, they're about good in the middle there, but the aquas, I'm gonna make them a bit more on that side uh, saturation so we want certain colors to pop more than others let's really bring up the yellows it creates a lot of warmth let's drop the greens oranges we want them to pop quite a bit and then reds might just take them down a bit it's pretty much just the dress and then luminance is going to play a really big role in this i'll just do some more blues first so we want our blues to stand out lots aquas maybe take them down a little and then i'll just roughly bring up purple and magenta can't really see any in here but um we'll just roughly bring them up with the other colors so luminance is the brightness and deepness of colors i'm gonna drop the red luminance because i think there's a real deepness to those reds and that's very typical of this kind of style as well really brings out skin tones and brings in a bit more contrast just like a little bit more contrast oranges do the same so we're going to deepen so that creates very rich skin tones and then i'm going to really make the image pop by bringing up the luminance of the yellow so br brightness of the yellows greens and as you can see, when you brighten the greens, they go a bit more of that blue. So that helps us in terms of that as well. Aquas can come up a lot, get a real shine. And then maybe the blues as well. You can see how that affects the sky a lot. So maybe we'll, br we'll bring up the blues. As you can see, luminance played a big role in this image. A magenta, I'm not sure about those. Maybe we we'll, might bring it up. I think the next image we work with, we have to bring up luminance maybe. Blues could come across a bit towards the purple maybe. Just a tiny bit up the aquas a bit more maybe up the oranges a bit more the saturation of the oranges to make skin tones pop out and then you would also probably want to do some brushing to bring out skin tones and stuff like that okay so i think that one looks pretty good what i'll do is you could make this into a preset but i'll just same thing as making a preset copy i'll grab pretty much everything not brushes copy and we've got another image of hers okay so over on this image we're just gonna right click paste settings and we look pretty good we've got kind of the same style going on but let's get into making it look a bit more like this one so what i need to do is lower the exposure and then we want sunset tones so we look very blue let's warm it up more and then we want those purples coming in we look a bit green so purple sort of works with sunset as well whites could come down we want a bit more flatness and then blacks maybe bring down the clarity this one looks a bit extra smooth so i might drop that uh, i'm going to bring up the saturation it might come down to hsl see what's going on down here what i'll do is just uh, bring down our oranges a bit so we've got a lot of aquas in the water here let's bring them down a bit they're a bit too powerful let's go with that yeah i think our purples and magentas look good you can see how that really brings out the colors there oh, hers look a bit faded maybe the luminance of those need to come up 
Okay, so as you can see, the sky is very different. It's probably Photoshop in, but we'll just very quickly see if we get something similar. You can see the, the edges there. So what you can do, I've already placed the filters for this tutorial. So I just got a little circle on top of the sun. Our, our one was a bit too small. Let's bring up the exposure and then really bring up the warmth. Can't really see what's going on at the moment, but I'll show you. And then a bit of purple and let's go with saturation. And then you want your feathering to be pretty low for this. And bang, we've got a sun there. It's not perfect, but it's a lot bigger than before. So if I just grab this and delete it, delete. You can see how small it is. Command Z, bring that back. It's a lot, a lot bigger there. So you could add more warmth into it somehow as well to make it more orange. And then we just want to add more color into the sky. So we've got this big filter up top. Let's click on that. And what we want to do is just crank up the warm uh, purple as well. So it's going to help bring the oranges. We want to keep the sky quite smooth. You can see how it bends the colors not very nicely. And then sharpness to keep the smoothness, up the noise, up the more, up the defringing. They'll try to keep the uh, sky very smooth. And you can, as you can see, it's affecting the building a bit too much. So if you just go brush and go erase, you can paint away it affecting the buildings. I've already done it a bit, but that's how you brush away. So if I press O, you can see where it's affecting. I just don't want it to affect those buildings as much as it is. Okay, so that's good. And then just maybe another one here, just above the sun, so we can add a bit of extra warmth to that area because that's right above the sun. And then maybe even drop the exposure. It looks a bit bright there. I'll just do this really quickly. Like she's Photoshopped in a whole new sky, but I'll just show you how to get a little bit extra out of it. Okay, that looks good. So we have a brush up here in the sky. If we turn that on, that's where it's affecting. So we could add in a bit more warmth to that area as well by using the brush. But I might just leave that. I think it looks fine. But what we want to do is add a lot of contrast and pop and for our subject just to look a little more standing out of the image. So what we've got is a brush here over the top of our subject. Um, that's by pressing O, I can see where it's affecting. Just a little bit of brightness and then contrast and then some clarity. That's gonna help our subject stand out a bit. And I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty similar. All right, guys, that wraps up that tutorial. So as always, guys, go down into the description, give her a follow, give myself a follow on Instagram as well. Instagram likes are gone, so please leave a comment on my photos. I'm trying to keep every photo above 30 comments at the least now. I don't post too much. That's because I'm honestly just working on my course so much. I had all these travel plans booked and planned to get awesome content and then use that content in my course and here on YouTube to help teach you guys. But uh, that all got canceled. So now I'm just really knuckling down, getting this course finished. And then once all this coronavirus stuff blows over, I'll be able to go travel and way more travel content. But right now, smashing out the tutorials. So if you guys are interested in Instagram Pro Editor, go down into the description, check it out on my website and I have a free lesson for you guys. So all you have to do is enter your email there. And everything you guys need to know is down there. This is going to be good. Locking down, getting heaps of work done. Let me know how you guys have been affected by this down in the comments. If you guys are in lockdown, what countries you're in and stuff like that. Also, comment down below who you guys want to see tutorials on. So I can go reach out to them on Instagram. Ask them to send in a photo and then do a tutorial like this on them as well so yeah check out the presets guys check out the lots if you're interested in lots leave a comment like and subscribe go follow me on instagram uh that's all guys catch you in the next one